Hey everybody, Jared Sessler here. I wanted to uh, talk about SB5599 real quick and I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about it. This is gonna be a very quick video, but there are a lot of people that are completely unaware of this bill that recently passed through Washington State Legislature. Uh, the term that is being passed around, which is unfortunately quite true, is that it is state-sponsored kidnapping. And uh, let me just step back for a second and explain to you that there are already bills in Washington State Legislature, in the, in the, um, in the WAC, that um, there are RCWs that authorize the following. Um, outpatient mental health treatment. Now these are, all of these bills are bills that are centered around what's called gender affirming care, which is essentially uh, physical mutilation and also chemical mutilation to try to do, do the impossible, which is to change one's gender. Um, it's not possible. Uh, they would be much better off to pray because God is the only one that has the ability to do it. And even as far as I know, he's not changing anybody's gender. Uh, let's see. So outpatient mental health care treatment is already uh, approved and authorized by, uh, by our crazy people in Olympia who are writing these, wasting, I can't believe the, the progress that we could be making and they're making these kinds of rules. Puberty blockers, uh, double mastectomies, and what are called bottom surgeries, which I hate to have to describe to you, but the reason they call them bottom surgeries is because People wouldn't want to call them what they're actually calling them. The only reason we're used to the term mastectomy is because a lot of women end up getting mastectomies as a result of cancer treatment. And so that's a term that we have uh, become fairly accustomed to. Uh, you can use your imagination with bottom surgeries. So uh, also there are, are laws on the books that require insurance companies to cover facial reconstruction laser hair removal and remo removing the Adam's apple. Now remember, these are all targeted at minors. So 13 to 17 year olds, that's what everything I just talked about is targeting and is for. Uh, and the state has even, well, let, let me just talk real quick. Now I'm gonna share a link in this. First of all, I've been banned from Twitter and Facebook. So I'm, I'm gonna share this around with other people for them to be able to share it. Uh, but SB 5599, I'm going to share a link to a summary I did of the text. It was an existing bill that was already in place in the RCW, and it essentially required people in, let's say, a shelter, a public shelter or a state-funded shelter or even a private shelter, that they had so many hours that they had to communicate with the parents of a minor that entered the shelter. And so they were required to tell them, you know, pretty much everything they knew about them. They were required to um, give them the information on where they were located, uh, you know, offer the parents access so they could come and get their child, you know, all these kinds of things. They basically took that bill off the shelf. They edited it. I'll share those with you. And there, there's various edits that go on through it, basically giving, uh, you know, some 22-year-old uh, man in a in a shelter who who thinks he wants to be a woman but he still has the tools of a man to take your potentially 14 year old daughter uh and start counseling her in the back room of some shelter you can take your mind where it may go with that so that's essentially what 5599 is it's already passed kingsley has signed it uh it is now the law of the land in washington state furthermore the state legislature has gone to the extreme of passing another uh, a House Bill 1469, I think it was, that basically covers these same treatments and protections, if you want to call them that. You like my Lumberjack Logic shirt today? Yeah, Lumberjack Logic. He's got a, uh, it's Neil Johnson, he's got a podcast on uh, locals. He's really good, great guy. Anyway, uh, the 1469, the House Bill essentially uh, makes these same provisions available to minors that are visiting from other states. So take an example is, you know, a minor, you know, is having problems with their family, runs away, comes to Washington State, all of a sudden now they're protected and the state does not have to, does not have to communicate with their legal parents 
uh, and can go ahead and start giving them drugs and puberty blockers and, and possibly even uh, take them to the hospital and let them, let them go underneath the, underneath, underneath the knife to, to make permanent changes that cannot and will not ever be reversed. So anyway, it's, uh, it's a big deal. Um, but here, let me just say this before I jump off of here. Um, we spend a lot of time on our side, the rational side, in awe of what the left is doing. We don't spend enough time accepting the reality of what has already been done and starting to work on the long term. And I call it sort of leapfrogging. We have to leapfrog what's already been done to get ahead of it and to make sure that we're putting provisions in place to protect our future selves, our future kids and people from these kinds of things happening. So the state-sponsored kidnapping of SB 5599 is in the books. It's happened. It is going to ruin families. It's going to kill people. It's going to increase suicide rates. It's going to maim children. Uh, those have already happened. The bill has been passed. The state legislatures who legislator legislators who wrote it, sponsored it, and voted for it are all complicit and responsible for those deaths, for the su increased suicide rates, and for the literal mutilation of minors. They are responsible. Whether, you, whether they ever are held res in responsibility is another story. The other, thing, the, other, the other parties that are responsible are the doctors and the medical professionals who are, are performing these disgusting, ridiculous uh, surgeries. And um, so my point with that is, Yes, we do need to have a time where we become aware. We take five minutes, we make a little video, we make sure people understand what's actually going on. But what we have to do that is more important is we have to leapfrog that. We have to get out in front of it. We have to realize it's already done. And I'm not saying we don't do anything about it, but beyond just being disgusted with it and sort of bouncing it around our echo chamber, we have to then jump past it to the point where we're, we're talking about solution space, which might be a year or two, or I'm even looking at 10 years, 12 years out for Washington State for how do we turn this state sane again. And so I'm not going to go into that here because it's unrelated to this, but I just want to give you some encouragement that there are people that are thinking out long term. And I would highly encourage you to get involved in some of those thoughts and, and volunteer with projects I'm working on, which there's a slew of them. Um, including running for Congress in Washington's 4th District, um, and, you know, donate to projects like, like what I'm doing or to campaigns like this, and um, you know, just make sure your voice is heard and don't just be part of the echo chamber.